So today's video is gonna be fairly random. Uh, what else is new, right? But over the last few weeks, I've been working on other things and trying to recover from the awesomeness. So I've filmed a few random things here and there. None of it really goes together. So I guess I'll just narrate what's going on. Let's start off by making a few mods of the manual chair. Welcome back to the floor. Uh, so today, or at least right now, I'm gonna be messing around with the manual chair. I uh, got the thing from storage a while back, and I occasionally try to use this thing just to, I don't know, I actually really like it because I feel like I can move around a lot easier and stuff. Now my wrists and arms and shoulders don't necessarily appreciate this thing, but I still try to use it. Anyways, right now what I'm gonna do, for some reason when I set this chair up a long time ago, I put these spacers on the, uh, the axles and I'm not exactly sure why. I don't need this much of a gap here. It's not like I'm running any crazy amounts of camber. So I'm gonna remove one of these on each side. These are just sort of generic motor collar shafts that you can get from the hardware store uh, with little set screws in there. The further you have this spaced out, the lot, uh, you're much more likely to break uh, the actual axle tubes in here. So anyways, we're gonna pop these off of here and uh, remove this. I'm not really sure why at all I put those on. Um, but anyways, let's see here. I really need to get some impact guards for the front of this chair too. It got really scratched up. Uh, this actually wasn't from me. I, uh, I was traveling around a few years ago and some people threw my chair in the back of a truck and uh, Let's just say I make sure that my chair is handled more carefully now. But anyways, um, let's see here. What's a good camera angle for this? How about... There we go, I think that'll work. So we're just gonna pull the axle tubes out of here and inspect them to make sure that they have not broken. Actually, I don't remember, I don't know if I torqued down the set screws or not. Let me, uh, let me double check these. I don't think I would have because it's threaded inside here. So I didn't really want these doing anything. Yeah, no, those aren't those aren't tightened at all. Let's pull this off. If I can. Hmm. Okay, these are ridiculously tight. Uh, let me grab. I don't know if I have an end wrench in that size or not. Let's see here. Alright, I think. There we go. It's starting to come loose now. All right, so if you haven't dealt with one of these chairs before, essentially these are your axle tubes here, and they're just a big long threaded thing that threads into your camber tube. This is actually the camber tube and these are the axle tubes here. The camber tube is what changes your angle for the camber of the wheels. And then um, this here is what the quick releases on your wheels actually lock into. It looks like our threads here are okay. Let me just show you real quick. So here's the tire and it goes on here like this and then locks in place. And when you push the button this is what slides off. Yeah these are like I said just motor shaft collars. I'm gonna remove one of those and just put it back on with one. And there's a little spring washer and a flat washer in here. We will need to make sure it's still on there. Probably don't need any spacers at all, but for whatever reason, I'm gonna leave the one. So I think none uh, with the camber I have on here. I think I have two degrees. Yeah, two degrees of camber. I think if I put zero on here, these side guards will kind of interfere. So let's get this screwed back in. Plus it'll make me feel a little bit better knowing that uh, we've got more threads engaged and it's not cantilevered as much. Because I had one of these break a long time ago. I don't remember if it was on this chair or another one, but it always seems to happen at the least opportune moment. And if one of your wheels falls off, um, you go down like a ton of bricks, no matter what. And when it happened one time to me, I was carrying a bunch of stuff in my lap. And that was not, not exactly 
the most exciting thing in the world. Okay, let's uh, the other side here. And yeah, this is a tie light titanium chair, so it's pretty pretty lightweight. I haven't actually weighed it, um, but I can pick it up and move it around pretty easily. Even with the side guards I put on here. Yeah, I, I custom made these as well. I'll show you those in a second. Let me get this off of here. And same deal over here. I'm just gonna take one of these off. And so you can see how long the threads are on this. And if you look inside the camber tube, you'll see that the threads actually don't go that far in there. So if you are gonna run spacers, there's actually quite a bit of room to do that. You just run the risk of these things snapping. Uh, I got these upgraded ones. These are like chromoly. The other ones I had before were just sort of like the black um, anodized steel ones and they broke. But these chromoly ones are way stronger. So anyways, we got one spacer off, spring washer or thrust washer and flat washer still in here. So we'll screw this back on now. All right, and then you wanna get these good and tight. Uh, I mean, they are fine threads, so you don't want to go like, you know, you don't want to attach them with like a breaker bar or something insane, but you want to make sure they're not going to spin or rotate at all. So I just get them as tight as I can by hand using a half size wrench like this. That way you don't build up too much torque and break stuff. All right. Yeah, so on these, on these tie light chairs, there is a rigidizer bar across the bottom here. And Usually these are designed so that you can pick up the chair when the back is folded and it's actually pretty balanced. So when I pick it up here, you can see that uh, the chair pretty much just pivots right around that. And if the back was folded down, um, it would be like perfect balance. When I used to drive a car, uh, didn't have a wheelchair lift or van or anything, um, I would, uh, it's a lot of work. <laughs> I would pull the wheels off of this thing and uh, throw it over me into the back seat. Okay, so looks like our spacing is pretty good here now. We've got only one of those on there, and we've got about two fingers of clearance. Um, I have lost a lot of weight, so the only thing I could think of was maybe before that me sitting in this was deflecting these out quite a bit and they were touching the wheel. Oh yeah, I was going to show you. So I took the original tie light uh, side guards and I got some uh, aluminum diamond plate and I traced them out and cut them out so they're bigger. I think I've got some photos of that. And then what I did was I took some of these tie down brackets and drilled holes through the side guards and then physically mounted them to the uprights on the back of the chair. So this is sort of my version of like a box wheelchair. Uh, there you can see. So with the bigger side guards, this little bracket down here uh, isn't capable of holding them from flexing. So this way, they're pretty rigidly attached. The reason I did that originally was because, like, around Portland in the, uh, well, pretty much all year, except for a couple months in the summer, it's raining. And all the rain and stuff would get off the tires and get all over my clothes and my jeans and stuff. So I decided to make these much taller uh, side guards, and they worked out pretty well. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to... I'm gonna hop back in this thing and uh, see where we're at here. And Tie Light wants like $85 for a set of the neoprene impact guards here. Um, I could probably just get some sort of other wrap and put it on here. Actually, was it Austin? There was someone that was telling me uh, a method they had used to wrap this so that you don't get the uh, paint and stuff coming off. Because Part of the process when I was loading this thing into my car before was tilting it forward on its front. I mean, I was pretty careful, but still, wow, the floor is uneven in here. <laughs> the slab in here is not very even. I was thinking at first that maybe something was screwy on the chair, but I painstakingly adjusted this thing previously, so I don't think it's off kilter. But yeah, this is the Tylite ZRA. Uh, it's got the fully adjustable hardware, which does add a little bit of weight, um, but you can change it later on if you want to. Anyways, um, I'm gonna hop back in this and see where we're at. All right, I don't think I'm gonna take off that other spacer because if I do, the tire is gonna interfere with the seat back fabric here. 
and also potentially I could get my thumb caught on that bolt. So I want to leave a little bit of space here so that as I'm pushing, I'm not going to saw my fingers on this diamond plate. I'm kind of remembering now why I put those spacers in. But yeah, I have lost about 85 pounds since I first set this up. So, so these two things are unnecessary now. We're just going to run with one of each. All right, well, I've got a meeting with um, some people that work for the company that own this building. I had mentioned in a live stream on the other channel that their lawyers sent me a letter that was interesting. So um, I'm trying to get an automatic door installed here and they told me they were going to do it when I first moved in, but then they changed their minds and then started telling me stuff like, oh, no, there's any other one. I don't know. Corporate reached out to me and they said, hey, they want to chat. And I told them, I think an informal conversation may clear up some of the stuff. So there, like I say, I can overlook a lot of stuff as far as like accessibilities and other things. But if you're gonna start being discriminatory and telling me how I'm intentionally causing problems and all that, I will immediately decide that the things I've been overlooking need to be taken care of. I'm hoping this person that's coming in from the ownership or corporate or whatever, we can just have a nice informal chat and take care of some of the problems here. But uh, anyways, I gotta head over there and talk to them now. so much easier to move around in a manual chair, as long as your wrists and shoulders can handle it. I'm just gonna go ahead and voice over this part because the wind was absolutely insane, but I'm headed down to meet up with a friend and the Lime Scooter people are going to be giving away free helmets and super discounted accounts because there's a major train disruption uh, with transit here in Portland for the next few weeks. Now, obviously, I can't ride a scooter, but I figure if someone is with me and they want to take advantage of a discounted account, uh, might as well do it. So we're headed downtown to find them and get free stuff. to hop on the streetcar for a few minutes. They had really good air conditioning in there. And also ran into a random friend on there, which is unexpected. People are so confused by stop signs around here. Oh look, we're going to take a picture. That's the train that almost hit us. <laughs> Eating random snowballs. Oh, Got to go all the way to the front. Ah, uh, the AC is working in this one, I can feel it. All right. Oops. Hey guys, you're gonna need both of these spaces if you don't mind. Right now. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I want to get to the back, right? Get it 
Pop it. Omni. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it does say lime on it. I know. Put a big sticker over it. To black it out or something. Find a green sticker of a frog or something to put over it. Yeah. Owner's manual. Mm. Oh, really? Give me instructions on how to use the helmet. The helmet you have just purchased provides protection. Mm. Do not crash. These directions are confusing. I don't know about white, but you know, I think uh, <laughs> it'll afford me a little bit more space. On that 17 degree right now. Last I may have somehow gotten to an appointment an hour early. Um, so, no time like the present to repair the stereo in the green van. This is a uh, Sony deck that I got from Goodwill a while back for $10. Works very well. Has a lot of outputs and inputs on it. Uh, so works good with a sub. And my favorite thing, it has a rotary volume knob. That's a must with any stereo. But, um, these cables that I was using for the input, I had to bend them pretty abruptly because there isn't room back there. So, as you can see right here, um, this wire is not really working very well anymore. And every time I hit a bump, things would start buzzing and freaking out and stuff. Plus, the cable was a little bit too long and I just jammed it into the dashboard. So, I'm going to remove this. It goes down through there and then into this little Bluetooth receiver. And we're going to use a proper uh, Y cable that's only six feet long. And this thing I normally just put inside the compartment down there. But, uh, yeah, got some time to kill, so might as well do this. I brought my tools with me randomly, so, yeah. Wait a minute. I just got scammed. This has RCA connectors on both of it. Oh. I grabbed the wrong one. Eh. Oh well, I'm not going back across the parking lot. I think these will be a little bit better at bending anyways. Um, so, uh, that's annoying. Oh, wait a second. I have this one. Oh, I remember now. I couldn't use this because these are so incredibly long. There's no way they would bend. I need low-profile stuff, so... Eh, whatever. We'll just have to keep using the adapter. But, at least... We will be able to get rid of some of this excess cable here. Oh man, this is garbage electrical tape. <laughs> I'm just going to use the old wire to uh, fish the new ones through the dashboard because it was kind of annoying to get that pulled through there. Alright, let's see if this will work. this old cable. So close. All right. Those wires back there are highly compressed. May not be the most ideal situation, but let's test it.
I must have hooked something up wrong. The audio level won't change. It's either on or off. Oh, dang it. Um, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I had the wires plugged into the wrong spot. That'll do it. I didn't film it just cause, well, I got new tires for the Bounder and I just installed them. I, um, let me mute the TV. Watching Lewis Rossman fixing MacBooks. Um, yeah, I've done a lot of videos about taking the tires on and off of this chair, so I figured that's not necessarily something I need to film. Man, I've got a heck of a tan line around my sunglasses, wow. Um, but anyways, uh, I made a couple of changes. I had some issues with the camber on the drive wheels on the Bounder. But I was also running some spacers that spaced the wheels out a tiny bit. And the other issue was these, these split wheels have a big plastic spacer inside them. And I think what's happening is when you tighten down the bolts, when you tighten down the four bolts there, it tends to crush that spacer. And then the wheel and the tire tends to wobble a little bit because it's not on a flat surface in there. I think I need to get some, um, I'm sure I can probably buy them, but I might have to machine some aluminum spacers to put in there so I don't have that issue anymore. But what I did was I took the other spacer off that pulled the wheels out like this and I put it inside there. So now there's a thick spacer and a narrower spacer. And I'm pretty sure that's how Bounder has these things set up from the factory with the two spacers inside there. It actually leaves a little more room for the valve stem in there. But also it flares the tire out just a tiny bit wider. The issue I was having was there's a spot on the frame that when you hit a bump, it would rub on the tire. That's why I put those on originally. But spacing out each tire a quarter inch also affects the load of the whole system, and that could have been my camber issue. So anyways, after running the last set of tires, I think I mentioned in a video, but I was wearing heavily on one side. So I took these off, spun them around, and reinstalled them, obviously on the other side, because they're directional. Uh, so I wore on one side of the tire first. This was the first side and then I wore on the second tire, and the camber was enough to basically split the wear pattern in half, as it were. They lasted three months, um, but I'm thinking with these changes now, I shouldn't have to actually adjust the camber on the chair. I spoke to Bounder, and they told me how to adjust the camber on this. It looks like it's a little bit of a pain. Uh, hang on here, let me get turned around. The entire motor drive assembly with the swing arm in the back and the shocks and everything is all mounted independently on a carriage and the front half has these two Heim bolts here and essentially what you need to do is, well slide the battery box out, but you need to disconnect this inner Heim bolt here and turn this about a half a turn and then in theory, well not in theory it will, it'll pull the mechanism up like that which would uh, help with the camber. Now, everything's all attached to one piece, so that wouldn't affect the tracking of the chain drive or anything like that. But I think right now, um, man, I need to clean, ew, what is that? I was on a road they just paved yesterday. I think that might be some of the tar. Anyways, um, 
I think we should be good. I'm not seeing as much camber right now, but I'm gonna keep a real close eye on this the first few days and see if we get a wear pattern set on these new tires. And also keep an eye out for that frame bolt interference. And if either of those happen, um, I'll have to put the spacers back on the outside. And also I will, actually, I guess adjusting the camber would probably help the clearance too. I don't think I can film. Here, let me, let me see if I can show you. There is, ah oh yes, see that Allen head bolt down in there? It's uh, right, just to the right of the spring. Now that bolt is just barely there, I think. Ah, there we go, there you can see it. So I can't get my finger in there, but see where the light's pointing? That little block that sticks out to hold the fender onto the frame? It just barely hangs over the edge of the tire there. And the problem I was having with the original factory tires, because I tried to lower the suspension on the chair so it would fit in a van, is it was interfering and digging into the tires. Well, I don't need to put this thing in a van anymore, so I raised it back up to the stock height. But anyways, enough blathering on for me. Here's the old tires. They uh, definitely needed some help. Uh, I mean, I could have potentially kept running them, but uh, these, are, these aren't cuts, these are a little manufacturing, uh, the injection points here, but I could have kept running them, but I'd rather not get a flat tire because I run this thing usually at least like 10 miles a day and I don't need to get stuck somewhere. So, anyway, uh, yeah, there's that. I'm recording this for the second time. Uh, anyways, so a little bit of maintenance stuff here on the bounder. This has the suspension forks on the front. It has the, uh, the little springs here and this plate moves and articulates and there's a bolt that it pivots on back here. Well, there's no bushings anywhere here. It's all just metal on metal. So after time and water and other things, uh, you know, it's gonna need some lubrication. So I like to use this stuff here. It's uh, a dry lubricant. It goes on as a liquid and then dries as a powder. Uh, I don't wanna use grease or anything on here because then it's gonna pick up dirt and just create a big mess. So this stuff is kinda nice for that. Uh, I'll do the other side here since I was just recording and problems and things. <laughs> um, so I just like to spray a light coating of this stuff on all the metal on metal components. I mean, like these bolts and springs are just sliding through a metal hole here. Uh, notice I have a towel down here, but uh, yeah, so I just basically put a light coating of all this, of this on all of the uh, metal components here. And under this little plate, and on the pivot points here. This can I got was cheap back stock, and I think I have to hold it upside down for it to work. I don't think you normally have to do that, but uh, that's why I'm doing that. All right, there we go. And then also, uh, you can get a lot of rocks and dirt and other things that will build up in this point right here. So I like to take a screwdriver and make sure that's cleaned out occasionally because these tires are real good at uh, picking up little particles and things and then uh, flinging them around. And when they get stuck in here, as you can see, it starts, uh, it starts chewing away at the metal and the powder coating on there. So anyways, quick little tip there if you have a bounder and you got suspension forks on the front. I think next I'm gonna be chopping off these little freaking whiskers. And I've got easily like 600 miles on this chair. And these are solid casters and these things are not gonna wear off on their own. I'm just sort of OCD about having these little things on here. So I'm probably gonna cut those off. It's going to be a lot of work for uh, diminishing returns, but uh, one of these weird little tentacles sticking out. There are some annoying things about being disabled, one of which is all the supplies you have to lug around on a constant monthly basis. I don't know why, but they sent me about three times more than I actually needed this month. I had to make two trips to the mailbox <laughs> to uh, get all the stuff. So that's one box there. And then they sent me another larger one, 
uh, which was this entire box here, which has, that's a case of 10. Um, so I don't know if they got their wires crossed or they're sending me three months of stuff in advance, but uh, it gets interesting trying to lug around all that stuff. But I did, I guess I, guess I probably haven't mentioned it, but as some of you know, I've, um, I've done a lot of printing stuff in the past, and uh, I just uh, got another printer here, and uh, I've got a small job that some people are paying me to do, printing some large things. As you can see, there's a really large um, meme that I printed up there. I, when I got this machine, I figured the easiest way to test it was by printing memes. Then we got the classic over here. the old lady with inhaler. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, uh, so it's a giant inkjet printer. It prints up to like 24 inches wide or something like that. But it's uh, two of the ink cartridges in it needed to be refilled. And I didn't feel like, um, I didn't feel like refilling them myself. So I just went ahead and bought a couple of compatible ones. These were, I think, $25 each. They want $99 from Canon for this thing. Here, I'll, I'll show you the machine. Uh, here it is, this thing's pretty massive. Ugh. It's one of these uh, Canons, and uh, it prints, uh, you can print on rolls of paper or cardstock or all kinds of stuff, but it, uh, it prints very large and very clear. I mean, you can see here how giant this is, but the text is very readable on all this. Um, and, it, come on. Normally the process with these things is to just refill the ink tanks because it's got a whole bunch of them. But this thing does uh, pigment as well as dye based inks. But I believe it was the yellow that it was telling me it needed replacing. So I'm gonna get this thing hooked back up and then uh, the magenta was also a little bit low, but these things hold 130 milliliters of ink. There you go. They're pretty large. Most uh, consumer, like, desktop inkjet printers hold maybe 9 milliliters. Uh, some of them up to, like, 18 or so. But, yeah, these are a little bit larger, and they are refillable. That was my concern, was I didn't know if these compatibles were going to come with the... Uh, ink detection chip in there or not. It's not too big of a deal on these commercial machines because you can just turn off the ink monitoring. So, I don't know. But I'm gonna get this thing put together and then uh, need to print a whole bunch of stuff. I got some other supplies on order. It's some pretty big, heavy cardstock, but anyways, um, stuff and or things. Sometimes when you're using a wheelchair, you find yourself having to apologize. I'm well, not having to, but feeling like you need to. I, I go in here and they're a little, they have like um, sort of a line you have to wait in, but they have railings around it. And it is not big enough for any wheelchair to fit through. So I usually just kind of sit off by the side on the end there. Um, and there was nobody else there. Well, there's one guy in front of me, so he takes his order. And then uh, the guy wanders off into the back. A few more people come in and they're kind of waiting in line. And the other employee that was there saw me and she's like, oh yeah, well he's next. But then he takes the next guy's order and I'm still waiting. And then he starts taking the order of the third guy and the employee's like, hey, he's been waiting. And the guy that comes up to the counter is all like offended. He's like, oh, I no idea, you know, blah, blah, this and that. And it's like, okay, whatever. So they order my food and then, hang on a second. A whole bunch of people suddenly appeared. So anyways, um, I order and the guy somehow accidentally charges double 
So then he has to call a manager up to get a refund, but then that manager doesn't know how to do it. So then they had to call another manager up. And the whole time, like everyone in line just like standing there staring at me. So, cause they feel like I'm a decent human being sometimes. I feel the urge to say, hey, sorry, I didn't, I didn't know it was gonna take this long. I didn't know they're gonna charge me double. They gave me their food and uh, I was just waiting on my $5 back. But it's just one of those things where you end up in a situation where, you know, if you have any empathy for anyone at all, it's like, I feel like I need to apologize, <laughs> um, which isn't the case, but I don't know. It's just one of those things that happens. And it's only because I was in a wheelchair. I mean, they all got a little bit flustered because I'd been sitting there and then everyone's like, oh, sorry, sorry, you know, so he accidentally rang it up twice or whatever. But anyways, yeah, fun stuff. After much deliberation and carrying on and meetings and things, uh, we've come to an agreement and they will be installing a power automatic door on this building. Uh, I think it's going to benefit more than just me and anyone who might move in here in the future that has mobility issues. So it was, um, I mean, we got it figured out. I, it was just a matter of talking to the right people and uh, they were completely on board with it and we negated any of the need for lawyers and whatnot. Uh, so I can just throw away that letter that I got previously and uh, I guess now all that's left to do is enjoy the grumpy cat. Look at that guy. He is not impressed. Lady with a baby. Lady with a baby. Uh, 